بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على النبي المصطفى وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا. We reached to verse 27, concluded 26 in the previous session. Allah says in verse 27. إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا لَا يَرْجُونَ حِسَابًا This verse is an explanation of why the people of hell deserved hell punishment. Allah says, إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا لَا يَرْجُونَ حِسَابًا They were not hoping or rather, they were hoping that they will not be held to account. See, when you don't, ho when you hope something doesn't happen, you know it's a reality, but you just hope that it doesn't happen. In other words, you're following false hopes. You are adhering to your own whims and desires. Though you know it's a fact, it's a reality, but you're just following your false hopes and hope. We hope this doesn't happen. And this is how Allah Azza wa Jal described the kuffar. Sheikh Sa'di, rahmatullah alayhi, said, they denied resurrection. And the fact that Allah Azza wa Jal will hold people to account and treat them in accordance with what they live or how they live their lives. So the disbelievers sinned, denied, rejected, disbelieved because they were hoping, following false hopes that they will not be held to account, they will not be resurrected. And when a believer sins, when a believer disobeys Allah the Almighty, he resembles them in following false hopes that he will not find the consequence of that on the Day of Judgment. Allah continues to say in verse 28, And denied our verses with emphatic denial. So this is a second reason. The first reason they followed false hopes. They disbelieved. The second reason was their denial. They're perfused be lying of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So these two reasons made them deserving of that punishment described prior to that in the verses before that. And in this is a warning. For us believers, watch what you do, watch what you say, and watch what you intend. Make sure all of that is pure for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. Denial in the heart was from the kuffar. Insincerity happens from the believers. Be lying from the kuffar, sinning with the tongue and the limbs for the believers. Beware of resembling the, the, the disbelievers and beware of being heedless 
of the consequence of resembling them. Allah continues to say in verse 29, وَكُلَّ شَيْءٍ أَحْصَيْنَاهُ كِتَابًا But all things we have enumerated in writing. As if Allah is telling the kuffar, despite your false hopes, be assured that everything is in a preserved record. A record that does not get affected by the length of time. A record, the preciseness and accuracy of which never changes with time. Everything you do, everything you say, and everything you intend is recorded, is known. You know, it's... Uh really scary when you know how accurate that recording is or that record is. Even when one takes a quick glance with his eye, that's recording. You could be sitting in a gathering and no one is noticing anything. But Allah Azza wa Jal is seeing and His angels are recording. That's serious business. That's dangerous, brothers and sisters. That is extremely dangerous. And it should make us think twice and thrice before we do or say anything that displeases Allah Azza wa Al Hassan al Basri. May Allah have mercy upon him. Said, the people who will have the easiest accountability on the day of judgment are those who held themselves to account in this life. Those are the ones who will have the easiest accountability on the day of judgment. The ones who hold themselves to account in this life. Monitor themselves. Monitor what they say. Monitor what they, how they act. What they do. What they intend. The toughest accountability is going to be for those who were heedless. Who did not think before they acted or spoke out. And they will come on the day of judgment and say, يا ويلتنا ما لهذا الكتاب لا يغادر صغيرة ولا كبيرة إلا أحصاها And they will say, oh, who to us? What is this book that leaves nothing, small or large, except that it has enumerated it? Everything. Allah says in the Quran, مَا يَلْفِظُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيدٌ Chapter half, verse 18. He, meaning human beings, man, does not utter a word except that with him is an observer prepared to record anything. Anything we say, anything we do, there is an observing angel ready to record it, either for or against us. And the choice is ours. Imam Ahmad became very ill once, and a man walked to visit him, and and he heard him sighing. So he said, I heard that Tawus, who is one of the Tabi'een, said that even that is recorded. So Imam Ahmad refrained. It's just a small sound one makes 
as a result of pain resulting from sickness. He said, no, if that's going to be recorded, I better stop now. That's how people took it seriously. And that's why a man like this, hundreds of years later, still his name is mentioned, Rahmatullah Ali, and people say, Rahmatullah Ali. Billions of Muslims through centuries asked Allah Azza wa Jal and supplicated Allah Azza wa Jal to have mercy upon him. They deserved that. They earned that because they were serious with Akhirah. They were serious with regards to Akhirah. So they earned that. But the beauty of Islam and the massive mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal is just overwhelming. Listen, listen to this narration. It's really beautiful. This is in Bukhari and Muslim, narrated by Ibn Abbas. The Prophet وسلم, said, Allah Azza wa Jal has ordered that good and bad deeds be written down, be recorded. Then Allah Azza wa Jal explained it. Clearly, meaning how to write. How should an angel write? So he said, He who intends to do a good deed but does not do it, it will be recorded for him as a full deed. You intend to do good but something happened and you didn't do it, it's recorded for you as a full complete deed. But then if he intends it and does it, then, what happens? What's the result? Allahu Akbar. Allah Azza wa Jal instructs the angels to write it, multiplied 10 up to 700 and even more. That's one day. Now listen to more. And if one intends to do evil, but refrains, it will be recorded for him as a full good deed. And if he intends to do evil and does it, then it is recorded against him as one bad deed. Look how merciful Allah is. Look how facilitated the matter is. You intend to do good and you don't, you get a reward. You intend to do evil and you don't, you get a reward. You intend to do good and you do, you get more than 700 multiples. And you intend to do evil and you do, it's only one. That's the mercy of Allah. But again, the point of the, of the narration was that everything, even the intention is recorded in a record. Allah Azza wa Jal says in verse 30, فَذُوقُوا فَلَنْ نَزِيدَكُمْ إِلَّا عَذَابًا Which means, so taste the penalty, the consequence of what you did. So taste, and never will we increase you except in torment. Subhanallah. Ibn Umar said with regards to this verse, he commented saying, this is the worst. The toughest verse that was revealed with regards to the people of hellfire. This means that the punishment now is easier than the punishment after a minute. And that is easier than the one after because every minute that passes, the punishment changes and it increases. Shaykh al Uthaymeen. He said, the type of punishment will change, the duration of punishment will change, the severity of the punishment will change. So, no one can get accustomed to anything. There are different types of punishments. One will be suffering from in hellfire. And let me quickly give a, a couple of examples. 
since we're running out of time. In the book of Imam Hakim and Al-Bayhaqi and others, Shaykh Al-Albani ruled it to be an authentic narration. Abdullah ibn Al-Harith, may Allah be pleased with him, said that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, in hellfire there are snakes that are as huge, as big. There is a type of camel that has a very long neck. He said, these snakes will be as huge as these camels. It will bite a person. He will feel and suffer the pain of that bite for 40 years. And there are scorpions in hell that are as huge as mules. One will suffer the pain of their sting for 40 complete and full years. That's one. One bite and one sting. 40 years each. And there are many other types of punishment we cannot enumerate in, in these short sessions. But this was just an example. One Psychological punishment. Is that the command from Allah Azza wa Jal? Fadhuqu, so taste, as Shaykh al Uthameen said, it's a way of humiliating them and telling them that don't feel relaxed. The more you stay, the more you will be suffering, and the worst matter is going to get. Allah Azza wa Jal says in chapter Ghafir, verse 49, وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ فِي النَّارِ لِخَزَنَةِ جَهَنَّمَ دُعُوا رَبَّكُمْ يُخَفِّفْ عَنَّا يَوْمًا مِّنَ الْعَذَابِ Which means, and those in fire will say to the keepers of hell, supplicate your Lord to lighten for us a day from the punishment. Now notice the following. They could not dare say our Lord because they did not live their lives With him being their Lord, they denied his Lordship. So they didn't dare say, our Lord. They said, your Lord. Also, they did not say, supplicate your Lord to stop punishing us. They said, to lighten the punishment, even as little as a day. They knew they cannot address, and this is the third point, they knew they cannot address Allah directly. Because Allah Azza wa Jal says, قَالَ اخْسَأُوا فِيهَا وَلَا تُكَلِّمُونَ Verse 108 of chapter Al-Mu'minun. Remain despised therein and do not speak to me. More humility. More punishment, more suffering for those who deserve to be thrown in hell, for those who deserve to be punished in hell. In the following session, inshallah, we will start with the following set of verses that address the description of the people of paradise and the bliss. Allah Azza wa Jal promised them. May Allah make us amongst them. Allahumma ameen. Wa akhru da'wana. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.